it's in its floppy form, right? Because the whole goal is to set this saddle on and then fit it to it. What's really important is, and it, it took Matt and I a long time to figure it out, how to create flex this way and flex this way, right? Because you have some goats that are big in the room and are actually leveled out like this. And you have other goats that sit like this, almost like a pancake on their back. And you have other goats that are A-frame and steep. To imagine that one rigid design can fit that goat is really just silly. The difference with ours, and I actually used to say if I picked any saddle in the market, it would be the Sopras. And I still believe it's number two. I'm a bit biased because I built this saddle. <laughs> yeah, I built this saddle to complement the issues that I had with the Sopras. The primary one for me was trying to overcome the fact that when you have a, and I'll call it loose fitting rather than soft or whatever you want to call it, when you have a saddle that doesn't have a solid tree to hang onto the corners, then you have to have cinch pressure as you saw in his demonstration. That cinch is buried this deep in that brisket. Uh, and to do that, you that's the only way you keep the saddle from spinning. But if you have a rigid saddle that fits, you don't need any cinch pressure, any print. You don't, you don't need any pressure because it's like pulling on a shoe. So because of the fit, you now have the capability to keep the saddle in place with very minimal cinch pressure. I'm a, I'm, my front cinch is, 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 is as tight as their back cinch. And so it's just the difference of you and me. Put 50 pounds of pressure on your chest and hike, put five pounds of pressure on your chest and hike. That's the difference. If the saddle doesn't move, then we're still dealing with the same situation and the saddles don't move. The yoke design was Matt's brilliance. This was not my idea, this was his. Um, he was brilliant to do it, it works. It played really well. Now you get pressure coming from all the way around. You don't have your goats doing the cough fest on the climbs. You'll notice that the problem with most of the breast collars, they catch them right at the insertion point of the esophagus and the chest. And if, you, if I was poking you in the esophagus, you would cough too, right? Because that's what happens. As they're climbing with each step, that cinches or that breast collar is hitting in there, plus the wear factor. So it's rolling back and forth and you get you get bald spots. You just don't get that with this. Our britchin, we do get wear spots on the britchin, and it's on this piece right here on the top of the rump. So that's our Achilles heel. He said every saddle has its bug. We cannot figure out quite yet how to have this not slide under the fur and create a slight wedge spot under the fur. This is the Achilles heel of this design. This britchin, because of its variability, is super fit. So once you do all the different components to this, the fit is just really exceptional. And the way you'll know it, if you have a wooden crossbuck on a saddle that doesn't fit a goat, a lot of you will go, oh, that's what that is. You'll pull that saddle off after a good day of hiking and you'll have swirls in the hair pattern. And what that swirl is, is that's that saddle moving around, micro movements the whole time. You want to pull a saddle off, and the Sopras does this. When you pull that saddle off, it should look like hat head. It should look like that hair's laid down, and that saddle has not moved a micro millimeter the whole time it's on their back. Because it stays in place, the hair's laid down nice, and the goat is comfortable. How many of you put a hat on, your hair's kind of tweaked in one spot, you wear it all day, and then it actually starts hurting on your hair? Well, they're the same thing. That's why you don't press their hair in the wrong direction when you do it, and you don't press the hair in the wrong direction when you put the cinch on. The thing that, that these guys spoke to about cinch location, I personally mount my cinch first. First thing I do, I'm gonna do the cinch. I'm like the horse people, I'm gonna put the cinch on first. This is where I fit my saddle, and I do the same thing with the whole shoulder blade. But you'll see all the other crossbucks out there, all the other rigid systems insert this front cinch right here. They put it in the middle, which makes sense. The problem is, is that it's too far back then. So now you're catching that goat right at about his difference between his sternum and his stomach, and that's just too far back. So what you try to do is you try to mount that cinch. So if the goat's head is here, you try to mount that cinch back at an angle. And what happens is it's not that the cinch slides forward, it's that the saddle slides back, right? And so you never end up with good fit and you end up with that waggling goat that's walking and it's creeped up on his shoulders. And, and it's doing this because it's up in his shoulder blades and his shoulder blades are rubbing on it. So you just want to be conscientious that fit is very important and that's why we had to go with the 45 degree angle at the back. Now, one last thing and I don't want to steal Matt's thunder so I'm only going to mention it. The one thing we won't do, I will not do this as a company and it is actually a really good monetized structure. 
If my goal was to make money, I would have cheap equipment because cheap equipment is much easier to sell. Just so you're aware, just the aluminum in the tree is $110, my cost. 125. 125? <laughs> so, thanks Matt. So 125 bucks, that's just an aluminum. So that's not cinches, that's not man hours, that's not the craftsmanship. And all you gotta do is hold this saddle for five seconds so you realize the time and energy and excellence that Matt puts into making it. Plus at the same time that you don't have to buy a pad. So you gotta remember, you gotta equate a pad and your cost of whatever you're buying. And we're really a little bit more expensive than everybody, but we're not crazy more. And we are crazy better fit, in my opinion. And you get a goat that is comfortable, just like you and me. If I put you in a size nine shoe and ask you to walk one mile, you could probably do it if you were a size 10. But if I ask you to do 10 miles in a size shoe, one size too small, you're just ain't gonna make it. It's just too painful, and for them it's the same. So a lot of these underperforming goats are underperforming because of bad saddle fit and conditioning. Those are the two reasons that that guy that gets in and goes, I tried that pack goat thing. Man, I put more than 20 pounds on it and did two miles and they just couldn't make it. Bad fit, bad conditioning, I almost guarantee it. Because you can take a turd that has a good fit and a, and, and a decent conditioning and he'll still walk five miles and do decent. He just will, he just might be slow, but he isn't gonna give up. A goat that gives up is hurting. Did you guys just hear that? A goat that is giving up is hurting. So he's in pain. So it's really important you understand that fit and conditioning are two very critical components to having a goat you know, do well over time. I hope you found that video helpful. Um, we do our best to help you to be a better goat owner and that's our goal here at Kimberlite Ranch and PatGoats.com. If you liked what you saw, please click to subscribe, leave a comment, and make sure you share this with other people that need help raising goats. Also, please don't forget we have a membership. It's called the Goat Club membership where you get to watch us raise goats on a, on a daily basis. And I show you how to troubleshoot and I solve problems live on video on a Facebook group that you can watch. And we post on that a bunch and then you get live Q&As and all kinds of fun stuff. We know that that can be helpful. And there's also all the courses on how to raise baby goats and um, how to raise a milker and how to help a goat have a baby and pack out 101 and all that fun stuff. So our goal here is information and to help you to be a better goat owner. I hope you found this video helpful. Please help to support us by taking in some of our information. God bless.